everybody, welcome back to the Working Man's Whiskey. I'm Bobby. Uh, just got home from work, guys. Uh, long day under the sun, and uh, felt like doing a whiskey review. Felt like drinking a little bit of whiskey and uh, talking about one that uh, it's rich in history and pretty rich in uh, controversy as well. Uh, just to give you a little heads up, it's uh, Templeton Rye. Uh, Templeton Rye. Um, they started making it back in the Prohibition days, um, and uh, once Prohibition hit, they took their uh, their whiskey kind of underground with them, um, started serving it at uh, speakeasies. I uh, love the bottle here. Uh, you see a guy, bartender, old school bartender, serving uh, some guys probably in a speakeasy. So, uh, you know, kind of like that uh, that old school kind of, you know, just tells you the character of the whiskey, you know, just uh, a little backstory in the picture there. So anyway, um, I'll read you the bottle, guys, read you the back, and then I'll tell you about the controversy. Um, so on the back, it says, when, pro when Prohibition outlawed the manufacture uh, and sale of alcoholic beverages in 1920, Many enterprising residents of a small town in Iowa chose to become outlaws, uh, producing a high caliber and much sought after whiskey known as Templeton Rye or the good stuff, uh, to those in the know. Alphonse uh, Kirchhoff was one of those Templeton outlaws. Over the course of its, uh, of its storied history, Templeton Rye became Al Capone's whiskey of choice, quickly finding its way to the center of his bootlegging empire. Legend suggests that a few bottles even found their way inside the walls of Alcatraz to the cell of prisoner AZ-85, which was Capone. Uh, this bottle of Templeton Rye is based on the original Prohibition era Kirchhoff recipe. It was aged in charred uh, new, new oak barrels for a smooth finish and a clean getaway. Uh, it says, uh, greetings from Templeton, God bless America. And then up above it says, uh, uh, there's a little quote here. It says, Uncle Al's favorite whiskey was the good stuff, Templeton Rye Whiskey. And that was uh, Deirdre Marie Capone, um, his niece. So, anyway, guys, let's get on to the uh, kind of controversy of this stuff. So, uh, there was a class action lawsuit a couple years ago. And it uh, turns out that um, Templeton Rye wasn't quite what they said it was. Um, you know, they said it was from Iowa. It was uh, made in Iowa, bottled in Iowa, um, and that it was a small batch whiskey. Uh, so, turned out, some people got together and filed a suit against Templeton Rye um, because Templeton was actually getting the rye um, from uh, from Indiana. Um, Indiana, Lawrenceburg, uh, I believe it's Lawrenceburg, Indiana, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, they they produce a lot of rye for different whiskeys, you know, I believe uh, Bullet and uh, George Dickel rye, and, uh, and they were doing the same for Templeton rye, so the rye wasn't coming from Iowa, um, but what they were doing, they were getting the rye from, uh, from Indiana and uh, kind of mixing it with their own recipe. Uh, supposedly, um, and uh, coming out with this stuff. And uh, the people who filed the suit, um, they, got, they got a nice little settlement. Um, and uh, I guess the, the outcome was that if you had produced, or if you had, um, if you had purchased uh, Templeton Rye since 2006, from 2006 to I think 2015, um, you were due either a refund of uh, $3 a bottle or um, if you had a proof of purchase, $6 a bottle. Um, so one of the main guys who filed the suit uh, said that he had purchased at least 12 bottles of the stuff and um, he had uh, purchased at least 12 bottles of the stuff. And, um, you know, so I mean, he got some of his money back and all that. Uh, probably got more money than that. But the thing is, if he was drinking, if he had bought at least 12 bottles of the stuff, it was probably pretty good stuff. I don't see why he would, you know, t 
taste wise why he would have purchased 12 bottles if it wasn't good stuff and that's what I care about the most is that it's good stuff um, I will say that Templeton Rye um, after they lost uh, that lawsuit um, Templeton um, the people from uh, Templeton uh, Kirkhoff's uh, the founders the original founders uh, son or uh, sorry grandson his grandson I think decided to um, kind of do the right thing and uh, they're going to be opening uh, a huge warehouse like a 55,000 square foot warehouse and um, uh, distillery and uh, and uh, rick house I guess you could say or a barrel house in uh, in Iowa so they're going to be uh, producing the stuff in uh, in Iowa from now on uh, distilling in Iowa and um, and bottling and all that um, it was already bottled in Iowa but they're going to be uh, doing everything in Iowa now, so it'll be, I guess you could say legit, but, um, you know, it, the recipe may change, guys. I mean, it's it's not going to be this, uh, quite the same, so it's got its good and bad things about it. It's going to be, it's going to be exactly what they say it is from now on. Um, I think they're going to complete uh, um, production or, um, you know, just building everything uh, within 18 months, they said. So it's going to take a while, but uh, anyway, bringing it back to Iowa and uh, let's open this up because uh, what I care about most is how this stuff tastes. And uh, I love rye whiskey. Uh, I know a lot of you out there love rye whiskey, uh, whiskey too. And uh, by the way, guys, on the side here um, by the neck, it did say uh, based on the pre or the pre prohibition recipe. Uh, by Kirkhoff. So, anyway, it's uh, it's based on that recipe. Like I said, they mix the rye from uh, from Indiana with they mix the rye from uh, Indiana with uh, kind of their own formula. And uh, starting in eighteen months, they're going to be yeah doing everything themselves, which is it's a good thing. And uh, you know, good for you people people from uh, Templeton. Um, you know, you'll have, hopefully things will go well for you. Uh, you may have people still complain, you know, it doesn't taste the same, but you know, I hope uh, things go well for you because uh, from what I hear, I've actually never had Templeton rye. I'll tell you that right now. I've never had this stuff. Um, so I hear it's great stuff. Uh, let's find out. Uh, on the color, you know, guys, let's pour just a little bit more in here. Back in. All right, so uh, let's take a look at this. It's a pretty light color. It's aged for uh, for four years, guys. It says aged four years. 80 proof, 40% ABV. Ugh, right there. So it's a pretty light color. Um, you know, it's a, a light amber, maybe like a like an apple cider vinegar type color. Um, you know, nice light color. Uh, nothing too dark about this. On the nose, that's it has a great nose. I'll tell you that right now. It's that uh, definitely that that rye, um, spicy, briny, uh, almost like a that dill pickle um, note that we've gotten in some of the other uh whiskeys that were produced in Indiana as well um or distilled in Indiana um you know uh, bullet and George Dickel rye you know it's got that same kind of note as far as the um that spicy rye and uh as I said like a briny note to it it's also got some a little bit of sweetness in there but really light on the sweetness it's just a, a very uh very smooth nose, um, not too much burn. You can, you know, some of the whiskeys out there, you've got to kind of do a double or triple take because, you know, you got a little bit, bit of uh, the alcohol burn in the nose. This one, not at all. It's got a very nice nose. Um, I mean, shoot on the nose alone, I would, I would give this a, an A. But uh, let's, uh, let's taste this.
And on the taste, big rye in the taste. A lot of good spice. Um, it's got that rye um, spice to it, but also uh, like a peppery, a peppery uh, kind of uh, burn in the back of the throat. Uh, just a really good, I love rye whiskey. You know, I, I love the spiciness. It's just, I mean, the nose was so smooth. Um, and I mean, the taste is very smooth too. The taste is very smooth, don't get me wrong. Um, but the nose was so smooth that, uh, you know, I was kind of uh, not sure how how uh, potent the, the rye would be in there. But it's got a good potency, definitely good potency. Um, really good rye flavor. Let's take another taste. Maybe a little bit of that oak barrel. A little bit of a caramel note, definitely. Um, but the sweetness is, it's so uh, so subtle, guys. Um, it just, it's such a smooth whiskey. And I can see um, why this has such a following. Um, hopefully, it'll still have a following uh, aside from the, uh, you know, the uh, controversy going on, guys. It's, uh, I mean, if you look at it, I mean, I like to think, I mean, I love history. I love the Old West. Um, you know, characters from the Old West, uh, Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday. And it's hard to separate fact from fiction. Um, you know, who knows if uh, this is close to the stuff that Al Capone drank. I don't know. Um, they say it's close to it. It's based on that same recipe. Um, you know, that rye comes from Indiana, I know, but, uh, you know, if it's mixed, if they're mixing the uh, stuff from Indiana with their kind of own, uh, yeah, I gotta say, this does not taste like the same exact stuff that, you know, the bullet is. It doesn't taste exactly like bullet or, uh, or George Dickel. It's definitely got similarities you know it's shoot it's a rye and it's made from the same uh the same grains um, in indiana but it's it's a good whiskey that stands on its own in my opinion um and i feel like uh you know it's getting a little bit of a bad rap and you know let's uh let's put that to bed let's uh you know they've admitted that they've made a mistake that they probably should have been um you know, distilling this in, in uh, Iowa the whole time. And uh, they're doing the right thing now. And uh, it's a good, good whiskey. And I recommend trying it. I recommend buying a bottle, definitely. I got this one. I've seen people buy or saying that they bought a bottle of this stuff for 40 bucks. I got this for 25 bucks. So um, very good deal. Um, well worth the, worth the money. Um, and on a, on a scale from, uh, you know, on the scale to a hundred, I would rate this, um, I would rate this right at about a 90 guys, right about a 90. Um, the nose and the, uh, and the taste were both, you know, a solid A minus, I'd say. Uh, the only thing I would change about this Rye whiskeys, I kind of like them, uh, usually like them at a little bit of a higher proof. Um, you know, I do like, uh, don't take that the wrong way, because I do like uh, a lot of the 80 proof uh, rye whiskeys. Uh, this one, uh, um, Old Overholt, I mean, that's a straight uh, rye whiskey at, at 80 proof, and uh, I think they're both uh, delicious, um, but I do like the... Uh, the bullet, you know, with the, I think it's a 94, is it 90 or 94 proof? I don't know. But, uh, and then, uh, like Pikesville, I mean, you got the 110 proof rye. I mean, whew, that's just a total punch in the face in a good way. Um, if you can take that in a good way. Uh, and then Rittenhouse, I mean, 100 proof, uh, bottle and bond, um, another great rye whiskey. But this one, as I said, stand, stands on its own. Um, 
very, very good stuff. So I recommend it, and uh, I hope you guys will try it out and, uh, you know, let uh, bygones be bygones, you know. So until next time, cheers.